Hi, good morning, guys. This is me, Santi. I'm doing a voice. This, this is a kapach. Yes, it is. It's a kapach like this. It's called lighter jar. It is one of the primitive forms of a capacitor. It is from this jar we have ability to more capacitors like this. Let's check this out. I told you this one is a capacitor and this is also a capacitor. What's a capacitor? Capacitor is a basic electronic component. You can see capacitors in almost all the circuits. What is it? A capacitor is basically two conducting plates separated by a dielectric or insulator. Two conducting plates separated by a dielectric or insulator. Conducting plates means these can conduct electricity. These two plates can conduct electricity. And this is a dielectric or insulator. It won't conduct electricity. This is a capacitor. Let's see how a capacitor works. If we can put some charges, charges are electrons, negative charges. If we can put some charges to one plate by closing the line, electrons comes to the plate and get loaded, get distributed on the plate. I don't know the shape of electrons, let's draw it like this. And this electron has got an electric field around it, traveling outwards. If there is an electron, it has got an electric field around it. This electric field can repel similar electrons. This electron also has electric field. If an electron comes close to another electron, repulsion happens. When one electron comes to comes near to a proton, which has got positive charge, electron has got negative charge, attraction happens. Attraction. And when one proton comes close to another proton, again repulsion happens. Repulsion. So similar charges repel. Dissimilar charges attracts. Let's now come back to our capacitor. Our plate is loaded with a lot of electrons. Each of them has got a negative charge and an electric field. The electric field travels outwards, crossing the dielectric and reaches the other plate. What's there? There are a lot of atoms with electrons revolving around their nucleus. If there is only one electron which comes to this plate, this electric field can repel and dislodge an electron from here which will travel outside through the connection of the capacitor. So this atom has lost one electron and has got a positive charge. Atoms, atoms has become positive because of the extra proton inside which is not balanced the electron escape. So whatever the number of electrons which came to this plate Similar number of electrons escape from these atoms and all the atoms become positive. Consider if, uh, if there are 10 electrons came to this plate, 10 electrons are going to leave this plate and 10 positive charges are going to appear on this plate. Here is a negative charge and here is a positive charge. Electric field. Negative charge attracts positive charge and it cannot move close can see each other because they are separated by a dielectric even though the electric field crosses and there is an attraction happens which holds these electrons here it won't let this positive charges will hold the electrons here it won't let it go and there is an electric field there forms an electric field in between these plates through the dielectric then you may have heard that capacitors can store electricity in the form of electric field it is this electric field which stores electricity. Even if we cut this charging setup, electrons are not going to leave this plate because this field will, these protons will keep the electrons attracted to the plate and the plate will remain negatively charged. And this plate will remain positively charged. Such a capacitor is called a charged capacitor. If we earn this one, the negative plate, all the electrons runs to the earth and the electrons which left the plate will come back and fill the fill these gaps and the atom becomes again neutral the capacitor is discharged this is a capacitor this is how a capacitor works now let's check how this Leyden jar becomes a capacitor for that we will make a Leyden jar for making a Leyden jar you need a jar like this a plastic bottle like this and an aluminum foil I cut this aluminum foil out from the 
food wrap. Now we are going to wrap this aluminum foil over the bottle like this. And settle it with a, a piece of insulation tape. And this aluminum foil is going to be one plate for capacity. So the dielectric should be the wall of the plastic bottle. When what is going to be our next plate? We are going to pour some water into this bottle. Water is normally an insulator. It won't conduct electricity. So we are going to add some salt inside and mix it up. Now our second plate is ready. Now we need to take charges into the water. That's why this nail. Make a nail to penetrate to the center of the lid and uh, the nail should touch the water. Yeah, stretchy. Now we are going to fit a wire to the nail so that the wire exposes the charges to more surface area of the water. I told you this laden gel is a capacitor. If it is a capacitor, it should get charged and hold the charges. Let's try charging this one. We need a PVC pipe and a paper towel to charge the laden jar. It's an old school technique. Do you remember rubbing a scale against your hair and lifting some papers? Static electricity. We are going to generate static electricity and transfer that charges to this laden jar. When we drop a PVC pipe against a towel, the PVC pipe picks up negative charges. Negative charges are electrons from the towel and the PVC pipe turns negative and towel turns positive. Let's try charging. The charges are jumping to my hand, so let's let me get a better sheet. Ah, the charges are getting closer. Can you hear a sparking sound? Wow! Now the charges from the PVC has transferred to the nail and the nail took the charges to the water. The water is having a lot of free electrons inside and the electric field around that electrons are pushing electrons from the aluminum foil outside and there is no place for the electrons to go. We still not a capacitor. Only when the electrons can go out from the aluminum field foil, it gets, it gets a capacitor. So the electrons on the aluminum foil are so ready to go out. If we touch it, we are going to get a small shock. It's fine. It's not that. There was a small shock. Let's air this one also. Then this jar gets a capacitor, gets in the capacitor. Guys, we are going to have the aluminum foil outside plate of the capacitor. Only then the electrons from the aluminum plate, aluminum foil are going to escape. Now this is a capacitor. Let's try charging this one again and uh, test it. I'm going to test the nail. The nail is supposed to discharge the electrons through me to the ground. Ah. So our laden jar gives a shock. Let's check how this happens. Mm -hmm. Suppose this is our laden jar. And we have filled it with salt water. This is our first conductive plate. And the conductive plate is connected to the outside with a nail. The outside of the bottle is coated with an aluminum foil. That's our second conductive plate. Uh, when we try to charge this laden jar for the first time, I rub the PVC pipe on the towel, on the paper towel. Rubbing the PVC pipe on a paper towel will transfer negative charges, that is electrons, from the towel to the PVC pipe. A lot of electrons are being transferred to the pipe and the towel becomes positive and the pipe becomes negative. When we pass this negatively charged pipe over the nail, the negative charges are going to jump from the pipe to the nail and travel to the water. Now the water becomes negatively charged. There is going to be a lot of electrons in the water. That electrons is going to push the electrons away from the aluminum foil but there is no place for the electrons to go because aluminum foil is freely hanging in the air it is not earth 
there is no outlet to go. That's why when I touched the aluminum foil from the outside for the first time, I got a shock. The electrodes were so ready to go from the aluminum foil, but it, it had no place to go. It jumped to my hand, it came to my hand and went to the earth through me. It was earth. Now after that, we earthed the outer plate. Now, our, now this laden there is a capacitor. When the PVC pipe approaches the nail, the electrons are jumping from the PVC pipe to the nail and the water is getting negatively charged. That is electrons. Electrons are going to push the electrons away from the aluminum foil and the, those electrons are going to travel down to earth through our earth. Now, inside of the jar is negatively charged and outside of the jar is positively charged. It is going to retain charges because there is a dielectric, there is a plastic wall between the aluminum foil and the water. So there is going to be an effective electric field between this water and the aluminum foil. That electric field is going to store energy in this capacitor. When we touch the nail again, the capacitor will discharge. That means the electrons from the water will travel through the nail through our hand to the ground. That's the shock we get. And what happens to the aluminum foil electrons? Those electrons escaped from the aluminum foil will come back to the aluminum foil from the ground. From the ground, the electrons will come back and fill the gaps. That's how the capacitor is to discharge. So that is our gladden jar. This is how the capacitors were came to existence. These electron commons, capacitors, resistors and other things were not came to existence in a day. It was from this kind of human experiences. These capacitors and the other electron com commons come to existence. This electronic commons has got a great evolutionary history. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I will bring another video next week. Until then, bye!